Okay, so let's find this sheet. It was this one. So this is the one I would like you to try and locate. Let's get this in focus. There we go. All right, so let's go through this together and make sure you're ready for today. So is everybody paying attention? I'm probably gonna call on you at random. Okay, so for the first task, I put the letters of the word anteater on separate index cards. Find the following probabilities. So, I have each of these letters. First, let's count how many letters we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight letters in the word anteater. So what would the probability of selecting a T be, Noah? Number one, yep. Two out of eight. Yes, two out of eight, which you can then reduce down to B. One fourth, you got it. All right, number two here is not selecting an A. Not selecting an A. Uh, Francisco, what'd you say for this one? Yeah, so at first it's six over eight, which then reduces down to be three. Oh, did you say three over two? Should be three over four. Right, because not selecting an A, I've got six letters that are not A's out of my eight, so reduce down to three fourths. Okay, number three is over here, selecting a vowel. Uh, J with an E. Selecting a vowel. You are correct, because we have four vowels. One, two, three, four. And when you reduce that, what do you get? Should you say one fourth? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, four is gonna go into four once, four into eight, two times, good. Okay, and how about number four, selecting a K, Christian? Four. Yeah. Well, how many Ks are there in the word anteater? In the word anteater, how many Ks are there? What did you say? Zero. zero. So that's my probability. Zero out of eight or just zero? So remember, when the probability of something happening is zero, that means it's never going to happen. I don't have K as a letter, so I can't pick K. All right. Now we are, those are single events. Now things get a little bit more complicated. So everybody, please pay attention. By the way, your quiz is exactly like this. I think I just changed the word. Like instead of anteater, maybe it's like library or something you know what i mean but the questions are basically the same so let's make sure that we know how to answer them so on uh, number five we are going to select a t and then i want to select an a but in between i am going to be putting the cards back so remember how to do this i'll do this one out with you first time i want to ask myself what's the probability of selecting a t Oh, okay. Well, the first time that's two out of eight. There's two T's. There's eight total cards. So that'd be a two out of eight. Then I'm going to multiply it by whatever the probability of selecting an A is. But I want you to envision the scenario. I have the cards. I picked one. I saw that it was a T. I'm like, okay, cool. I put it back because it says you do replace the cards. So I put it back into the pile. I shuffle and I pick another card. So now when I go to pick that A, how many A's are there in the bunch? There's two and how many total cards are there? There's still eight because I put the first card back. I picked it, I looked at it, and then I put it back in. So I have a two out of eight chance of picking a T and then a two out of eight chance of picking the A right after that if I put the cards back. 
So you can reduce first if you want. One fourth, and this is another one that becomes one fourth. So multiply straight across, I got one sixteenth. There's my answer. So you have a one out of 16 chance of picking a T and then an A, if you put the cards back. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but I'm not gonna put the cards back. So I wanna pick a T. That was a two out of eight. Imagine you have a T in your hand. Now you wanna pick an A. How many A's are there still in the bunch? There's still two, but how many cards are there? Only seven, because I have one of them in my hand. So now there's only seven. Um, let's reduce one fourth. Oh, and I can reduce the two and the four, right? Anything on top can reduce with anything on the bottom. So two goes into two once, two goes into four twice. Multiply straight across, I get one fourteen. All right, let's try seven. Now I want to pick a T. I'm gonna put the card back and then I wanna pick a T again. All right, let's try it. So Ash, what's the probability of picking a T the first time? Two out of eight, correct. And then if I put it back, what's the probability of picking a T again? Another two out of eight because I, I put it back in. So there's still two in there, there's still eight cards. So that one, let's just reduce that down. So that one, I get one out of 16 again. But now I don't want to replace. I want to pick a T and then I want to pick the other T. I want to see the probability of this happening. All right. So, Maddie, what's the probability of picking a T the first time? Yep. You got it. Two out of eight. So now if I picked one of those T's and I have it in my hand and I'm gonna pick up for a second T, how many T's are there left in the pile? Yes, perfect. One out of seven, because one of those T's is in my hand. So there's one less T and that means there's one less card overall. So reduce one, four. You only have a one out of 28 chance of that happening. Only one out of 28 of you picking the T and then the next T. Um, oh, nine's weird. I want to pick a T and then I don't want to pick a T. All right. So picking a T the first time, obviously we all know that's two out of eight. But now let's talk about this. So I'm not going to replace the card. So I have a T in my hand. I want to pick some letter that's not a T. How many of those will there be in the pile? One, two, three, four, five, six. Correct. There will be six. And how many cards will there, will, will there be? I have the one T in my hand. So there's, there's going to be seven that are left in there. Six of them are not T's, but there's seven total cards that I'm choosing out of. So I should have two over eight times six over seven. All right, let's reduce one fourth. I can reduce the four and the six by two. So that'd be three, that'd be two. I get three out of 14. I didn't leave myself the last space for that one. All right, so now we're done with anteater. Now, I actually like these questions better because they're a lot faster, like number 10. How many ways are there to arrange seven books on a bookshelf? This is the one where we ask ourselves, okay, when I go to put that first book up there, how many choices are there? I have seven total books, right? So you have seven choices. Then when I go to pick the next one, there's only six, five. So this is the one where I'm doing this. And if you remember, I don't want to, I mean, you can do that on your calculator, but that's annoying to like type each digit. That's where we grab our phones and use the exclamation point. So I am actually going to let you use your phone calculator today, just because it's so much easier. These ones, um, is this the one that has it? One of them has a button and that makes it easier. Uh, see this one, you got to go into like a menu to get there. But I'll show it. Okay. 
So in the graphing calculator, just so you can see the fun, if I want to do seven factorial on this, you have to go into math and then you have to go all the way over here and then see it there, choice four is that exclamation point. So it is a real thing, but it'll so much easier on your phone calculator. So we'll just use those. So remember you put it sideways. Does anybody not have their phone with them today or not know how to use their phone calculator to do this? So everybody try it just so we're sure that when you take your quiz, so grab your phones and everybody see if you can do seven and then do the exclamation point. And let's all make sure that we end up with the same answer of 5,040. Just so I know you know how to do it on the test. Have I got it? Okay. So any of the questions like that, that's all I'm doing. So this is really the same thing as that seven exclamation point. My final answer is 5,040. But just so easy if you know those buttons to use. All right, 11 is a bit of a different scenario. At Dairy Queen, you can get a small, medium, or large. You can choose vanilla or chocolate. And then you can choose one topping out of blah, 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 blah. How many different Sundays could be made? So um, this is where for each choice, you got to ask yourself, or for each option, how many choices do I have for each? So as far as the sizes of your ice cream, how many options do you have? Three. There's three. So for that's my size options. Then I have my flavor options. How many do I have? Just two. And then I have to pick one of the following toppings. How many choices do I have there? Four. Four toppings there. So assuming I'm getting one of each of these things, that means I have a total of 24. And those problems, that's all the same ones. If it's like outfits, you know, four pants and three shirts and two pairs of shoes, it's the same thing. Any of these ones where you go in and you have choices, you can pick so many things for this. So many, you just multiply all your choices together. All right. And then 12, we have done a homework problem like this. License plates in a random state are made up of two letters followed by three numbers. If they allow repeats of numbers and letters, how many different plates can be made? So we know we're going to have a le two letters and then three numbers. So letter, letter, and then number, number, number. So I have five things that need to get filled in, right? Everybody with me? So as far as the letters go, how many choices do you have for the first letter? How many different letters are there that could be the first letter? 26 different letters that could be that first, in that first spot. So I have 26 choices for the very first letter. They said we can repeat them. So don't I also have 26 options for the second letter? Yeah, I have 26. Now it says that the next three have to be numbers, but I am allowed to repeat them. So how many numbers are there that could go in this spot? How many? 10, right? Because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. So you actually have 10. And then it's 10 for each of these, right? So I can repeat these numbers. So now I just grab my calculator and I multiply all that together. I end up with, I got 676,000 different license plates. Did you guys get that same answer? Yep. Does that make sense how we kind of arrived there with these choices? Because these are just letters and it says that I can repeat them. So I can have 26, 26, and then my numbers could be whatever I need. All right, let's take a look at the back. Okay, so on this section, you are going to do two things. You're gonna roll a dice and then you're gonna spin the spinner. Now, let me ask you this question. When I 
spin the spinner? Does that have anything to do with the answer that came out on the dice? No, they're not related at all. Like when you're choosing cards, it matters. Did you put the card back? Did you not? Because it changes things. Here, these two things are completely separate. I'm going to roll a die. I'm going to spin a spinner. They're independent of each other. So all I have to do is find the probability of each thing and just multiply them together. So on a number cube or a die, what's the probability of me rolling a one? Uh, John, what's the probability of rolling a one? John, you with me? Okay, can you tell me the probability of rolling a one? talking about on a like one of these if you roll a die yeah, it's one out of six. yeah it would be one out of six right because you have one number one out of six total possibilities on that. so probability of rolling a one is one out of six so now i just need to multiply that by the probability that i spin an a on the spinner what's the probability of landing on an a over here one out of four so if I multiply those straight across, one out of 24 is correct. All right, number two, what's the probability that I roll an odd number? Connor. Connor, are you with me? Connor. I need the probability of rolling an odd on a number cube such as this one one half, and then the probability of landing on a B on the spinner over here would be one fourth. So if I multiply straight across, I get one eighth. Okay, number three, what's the probability of landing on something prime? J with no E. Yeah. Yes, because remember what the prime numbers are gonna be. It's not one, but it is two, three, and five. So two, three, and five, that means you have a three out of six or a one half chance of landing on something prime and then landing on a D over here. Right, so multiply straight across, one out of eight for that. Okay, probability of landing on something greater than four. Sue, so what's probability I land on something greater than four if I roll a number cube? Two, yeah, so you'd have two out of six and probability of landing on a C on the spinner thing. You got it. So now I just multiply straight across. I'm actually gonna reduce first. I get one twelfth on that one. Okay, and number five, I want to land on something less than three. Natalie, what's the probability on rolling this that it's less than three? Um, two, two. You got it, two out of six. And then consonant, remember everybody, is a letter that's not a vowel. So how many, uh, what's the probability of landing on a letter that is not a vowel over here? Three out of four, because three of them are not vowels. A is the only vowel here. So I'd have one, two, three out of four for landing on a consonant. So let's reduce and do our math. That'd be one, three, three, and three can just cancel. I got one fourth. And Sophie is not here, so I will do the last one. A prime number, we already said that that was a half, because we had two, three, and five. So that's a half and then a consonant we just said was three out of four. Multiply straight across, I get three out of eight. Okay, now on number seven, probability of spinning the spinner two times and getting a vowel each time. So what's the probability I land on a vowel the first time? Spin that spinner. Probability to land on a vowel is two, one, one. one out of four, right? So the first time I spin it, I only have a one out of four chance. What's the probability that I land on a vowel again? One out of four again. 
right? Because there still is only one vowel. So I'm just gonna do one out of four chance times one out of four chance means you have a one out of 16 chance of spinning the spinner twice and having it land on A each time. All right, number eight, what's the probability of rolling a number cube two times and getting a number less than three each time? Well, how many numbers do I have less than three? Wouldn't it just be two, one and two? So I'd have a two out of six the first time, and then I'd have a two out of six the second time. Reduce down, one third, one third. I get one out of nine. Okay, true, false. I'm putting you all back in the pile now. Number one, the closer the probability of an event is to one, the less likely it is to happen. True or false? Ash, what do you say? You're right. It should be the closer the probability of an event is to zero, the less likely it is to happen. When, a, when it's zero, it's never gonna happen. When it's one, it's definitely gonna happen. So if I have a probability that's really close to one, like nine out of 10, it's probably gonna happen, right? I have a much bigger chance of it happening than not. All right, number two, if the probability is equal to zero, that means it can never happen. I just answered that. Noah, what do you say to number two right here? True or false? True. That is true. If the probability is zero, it can never happen. Three, the probability of dependent events means that the result of the first event affects the probability of the second. So if they are dependent events, does the second event's outcome depend on the first event? What do you think, Connor, true or false? Connor, true or false? True or false on number three. What? I already read it. It is true. Dependent means that the, oh wait. Yeah, whatever happens on the first event will have an effect on the second event. So dependent events are like when you choose a card and then you don't put it back and then you pick another one. Uh, four, we actually didn't do tree diagrams. Um, so if you didn't get the right answer to, I mean, the answer is true, but I don't do tree diagram. It's too messy. This is there to, when you do a tree diagram, like if we did it for the um, um, that Dairy Queen example. This is literally what you have to do. So I don't expect you to do this because why? It's so much extra work. You have small, medium, large. You like literally list out, and then each one you could have chocolate or vanilla, chocolate or vanilla, chocolate or vanilla. Then you have to pick a topping. So you have four toppings, one, two, three, or four. Vanilla, you could have toppings, one, two, three, or four. See what I mean? Like who would do all this? So yeah, I mean, it can be useful, but why are you doing this when you could literally just multiply the numbers together? So eh, I don't like that question. Anyway, the fundamental counting principle helps determine the number of outcomes. That's true, but um, the fundamental counting principle is just how many choices do I have for each and then I just multiply them together. All right, then down at the bottom for multiple choice, for each situation, it says make a tree diagram, we're not making a tree diagram, but we can draw out the sample space, then give the total number of outcomes. Okay, so if I toss a nickel and then I toss a quarter, well, if I flip a nickel, how many choices do I have for it to, what could it come out as? Heads or tails, right? Those are the only two options. So I could get heads or tails for the nickel. Then I'm gonna toss a quarter. Couldn't the quarter come out as heads or tails also? So I could get heads, heads, or I could have gotten heads, tails. I could have gotten tails, heads, or I could have gotten tails, tails. Those are my only four options. So that's the sample space. For flipping two coins, it didn't matter that one was a nickel and one was a quarter, they're just two coins. So there's my sample space. There's only four different possible outcomes that I can have. 
Um, so B is the answer for number six. Um, picking a number from one to four and choosing the color red, green, or yellow. So again, how many choices do I have for the first thing? I can choose either one, two, three, or four. So I have four choices for that. And now I have to choose a color, red, green, or yellow. I have three choices for that. I'd have 12 total altogether, 12 choices. And, oh, so that was C. And then the last one, Isabel has two pants, three shirts, two shoes. How many different outfits? 12. Any questions on this one? Let me just take a quick look. All right, perfect. Oh, I even give you a bonus section on this quiz. But I'm taking a look. The front is almost identical. I just, like I said, instead of anteater, it's a different word. Oh, how funny. All right, and then on the back, let me see. Uh, it's the same idea. You're just, you have different, instead of, um, Rolling a number cube and then spinning a spinner, we're picking marbles out of a bag. Then I have one with spinners, that looks fine. We have one with cards, that's fine. All right, anybody have any questions before we give this a shot? No? Okay, so let me. Stop this video.